Well, hey there, folks. John Duffin here, Duffin Media and Duffin Coaching, working out some last-minute tech difficulties, but that's okay. We are here. We are ready to roll, folks, and I am here for you. <laughs> Absolutely thrilled, and I'm freezing up a little bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, well, that's a terrible face. Okay, so I'm already seeing a couple of tech difficulties as we go. I see somebody joining in live. Don't you hate it when the tech doesn't work perfectly? But that's okay. That's why we're here. Listen up. I'm thrilled that you're here. If you're joining me from Facebook Live, Dave DeBellius, rock star, rock star, rock star. You are awesome, and I'm thrilled that you're here. Brad Storm, this is crazy. All the cool people showing up today. So thank you. If you're joining me on Facebook Live, great. Thank you. If you're joining me on LinkedIn Live, thrilled to have you. I'm also blasting this on YouTube as well, too. So the fact of the matter is I'm thrilled, thrilled, thrilled that you're here. Uh, and what do we get to do today? So this is the five-day blitz, as I call it. It's been, and, and by the way, we're on day four. And don't sweat it. If this is your first time here, uh, the fact of the matter is I'm making this simple. When I'm putting a note in the comments, uh, I'm literally right now encouraging anybody who walks in the door, knocks on the door, show up, right? I just want you, I just want to know where you're from. Where you're from? Are you local? What part of the world are you from? I always want to know, but wherever you are. I'm saying to you, I'm thrilled that you showed up for me. I'm very grateful. So look, as I said, yo, I love it, Brad. I love it, Brad. And I am way overdue to get South Carolina. Uh, the fact of the matter is, here's the deal for me. As I said, this is our five-day blitz. I created this concept. I'm great. To, I'm thrilled to get to share the concept too. We're on day four. The whole deal, optimizing your communications by leveraging your voice. The whole point of all this, born in Brooklyn by way of Feasterville, Bucks County. Thank you, Dave. So the fact of the matter is, on this day four, we cr I created the concept of three tips. It has often been more than three, but the whole point is supposed to be three tips to pull you out of three situations where you use your voice, leverage your voice to be able to move the needle forward. The whole purpose. This week, we're bringing the optimized communications to work, so to speak. I'm leaning into work situations. And by the way, what you do for a living is not, I mean, it's great and it's all relevant, but it's not a better or worse, or this is only meant to this profession or what have you. We are all Right now, again, sus subject to making sure that we are communicating with clients, with colleagues, with subordinates, with bosses, layers upon layers. So all of this is literally three quick hacks to get you out of here. Uh, uh, these are lunchtime meetings, and it's rude of me to not have brought food for all of you guys. A uh, little minor backstory, Dave Debellius who has created uh, a fantastic home inspection company and, and, and is also a licensed realtor and a lot of other things. One of the really good, good guys. Brings food with him everywhere he goes. Brings food, brings tchotchkes. I just brought me and my loud voice. So the fact of the matter is that you showed up, I think is brilliant. And so relax. I'll have you out of here in a half hour at the most. Uh, the fact is here, what we've got is just a couple of hack techniques, hacks to move the needle forward. If you can walk away with anything today, my hope is this, that you realize that your voice is not just an add-on. And I'm not looking to make anybody sound like an announcer or a voiceover person or a narrator, although that would be great. It has nothing to do with this. All of this has to do with your best most true, authentic business voice. That's what it's about because we're in business situations constantly and the way that you are speaking. Now, by the way, none of this 
None of this replaces preparation, content, and understanding of the material. All of this has to do with making certain that you're not dropping the ball at the five-yard line, so to speak, after you've prepared so hard for your big day, your big meeting, your big presentation, your big speech, and then you literally lose it based upon the way that you sound. So I said three tips, right? Uh, I'm going to get to the first one because literally what I like to be able to do is make certain that I deliver. So here you go. <laughs> what are we talking about? I'm calling all of this. Why go it alone? This today is all about collaboration. I've worked in corporate America for over 25 years. I've worked in the real estate world. The truth is everything is a collaborative process. It is rare. Even one-on-one -on -one conversations are collaborative, but it is rare that it's just you. And the, the thing is, what, when you can work with others, it's always better, but you've got to be able to be in a position where, as we talk about, working in an environment, entrepreneur, company, real estate company, whatever, where we're creating an environment that encourages open communication, where the ideas and concerns too are able to be freely shared and valued. I'm going to talk about something called welcomed, invited, and included in terms of an overall tip, life lesson. But the fact is, it's really important to me that when you are able to collaborate, please do so. But these collaborations sometimes can blow up in your face. And so I want to make certain that when you are in these situations, you're able to optimize your communications. Okay. So no further waiting. Tip number one. Here's one of my favorite tips. Here's the setup, and then I'll bring it to you in regards to the business. The setup is this. I learned of this hack from my therapist, and it was a very personal situation. I was literally melting down and freaking out over something. I won't bore you with all those details. But the truth was my therapist suggested, hey, why don't you try this? It's block breathing. I don't know if anybody's familiar with it. Hop in, hop on. Let me know if this resonates with you. But if you're going to collaborate, if you're going to communicate with anyone and you are stressed and strained, you're going to do a bad job and you're going to literally blow up the situation. So I call it bring a Navy SEAL to work. You don't have to do that. But what would help is simply this. I'm going to show you something. It takes about 16 seconds. And here's the technique. It's a breathing technique, okay? Box breathing. Try with me if you will. I won't point and laugh and don't point and laugh at me. 16 seconds, right? Ready? Go. Inhale for four seconds. Hold for four seconds. Exhale for four seconds. Hold that for four more seconds. So what did we just do? Oh, Craig Mills. Thank God I wasn't holding my breath before I tried that. Thank you for showing up for me. And I've become a fan too. So I didn't know any of this. Here's what it does. It literally pulled the Navy SEALs out of panic situations, diving into deep bodies of water, moving to a point where they're literally in life or death situations, and that's just their training. I'm not trying to play make pretend that my business situations are as important or yours as Navy SEALs. I'm not. But it works for them. And if you had 16 seconds, I'll bet you do. I wildly suggest that you do that before you walk into your next meeting, conversation, phone call. Here's typically what's going on. 
I'll speak for me. I'm literally fumbling around. I'm doing it intentionally. Um, oh, oh, um, oh, right. Checking your email or text messages or whatever. And the fact of the matter is often you're going to find something you don't like. It just feels like the timing of an email or text message that you either don't want or don't want to do drops into your phone and into the atmosphere the moment you're ready to try to have a calm, peaceful conversation. So you're right away putting yourself in a terrible position. You want a tip? Five minutes before any meeting or your next meeting. Five minutes, that's all. I know, I'm addicted to my phone. Put the phone away for five minutes. Practice with two. Because if you literally stop on a dime and you bring all that baggage, whatever that email, assignment, text message, drop ball, whatever, and that comes into a collaborative conversation, you shut people down. Because everything that you're saying from that point forward sounds fake. Oh, I want everybody to communicate, but they feel the tension. They hear the tension. Uh, Brad, you can absolutely throw it out a window. Please do. Um, <laughs> oh, and folks, Brad asked, can you throw it out of, the phone out a window? Here's what I just did two weeks ago. I had to retire my old phone because I literally sent it hurling through the air at a Mexican restaurant and it died a terrible death. <laughs> so imagine that's how you wind up heading into your next communication. So use that. The old cliche, put the mask on you first before you help your passenger friend. Do it. Because you want to be at an authentic place. You want to be in an open space. Because collaborations in business, two-on-one -on -one conversations, one-on-one, -on -one, 10 with together, can get intense even in the best of circumstances. Michael Plishka, I love the idea of the buffer, by the way. I love, love, love that. Uh, so they're not back to back to back. This is really important. And I never learned that lesson. I worked for a major broadcast, multicultural broadcast company, digital streaming for a lot of years. I'll speak for me, but there was a lot of people involved that I would watch that were furiously involved in seven different things simultaneously. And so the answers that of two questions either I would ask or someone else would ask would be responded to. Yeah, no, but, no, huh, but. You're literally detonating a bad situation. So use that buffer. Take the 16 seconds. If you have more time, take that because you want to be in an open, inviting situation when you are collaborating. I really appreciate the feedback, by the way. Uh, I'm noted as well, too. Yeah, meditation is vital. Damn right. And Dave, I got you. I got you. Um, I'm learning to love them a whole lot less, <laughs> even the good ones. Yes, you got the job. Yes, we love what you do. Blah, blah, blah. They don't happen often enough, but the truth is, I, I find out that for me, it's it's they're always buried in something. So allow yourself the freedom to literally be able to have free space. Headspace is a meditation app. You may or may not know it, but use something at the very least. 16 seconds should pull you out of a situation. Okay. Now. I wanted to go to my next tip because we were insinuating that your voice matters and it does. Tip number two, ta-da! Now, because this is being broadcast on YouTube, <laughs> I wanted Gary Cole and Office Space and I wanted to play the video and all that, but they yanked that stuff down immediately. So I'm going with a more generic photo. But in your mind, when I say I don't like your tone, picture this. Picture a manager hovering over your cubicle saying something like, 
you know, if you could make me a hundred copies of your presentation, that would be great. Now, I'm not great in imitations. I'm really not. But picture that condescending tone of voice. Have you ever been spoken to in a sort of, you know what you need to do? I need you. I'm disappointed in you. Anybody, anybody, uh, tell me. Just me? <laughs> hey, here's the bonus question. Has anyone ever said to you, directly, by the way, to your face, that you have a really condescending tone to your voice? Oh, just me again? <laughs> Somebody actually said that to me in a conversation, business conversation, to my face. I never thought I was tough, but if you want to literally, literally melt, have someone say to you, you have a really condescending tone. <laughs> it destroyed me, destroyed me. You know what's even worse? That person, I really respect and admire and like that person. Now, blah, blah, blah. They came back. I was really sorry. I was having a bad day. Blah, 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 blah. Do you know, I still think about it. Here's your under over question, folks. Under over. A thousand. And we're doing this in a currency of dollars. A thousand. Your under over question is this. How much money did I spend on my therapist? After someone told me I had a really condescending tone. Under over. What was under, but not by much. But it was, listen, you know what it did? In retrospect, it taught me something. It taught me something significant. It taught me the fact, exactly. Uh, it taught me something, which is your voice matters. So. I've been in business for close to 30 years, been in a ton of individual corporate situations. I'm grateful for all of the experience. I really thought that the way I spoke was just the way that I spoke. I just thought that was it. That was it. I thought everyone just spoke the way they spoke. I didn't know that you have some control. And more importantly, you need to exert some control in regards to tone. I talk about the fact that you can fix that. You absolutely can fix that. I'm going to give you a couple of really easy solutions. Here's two. There's a million. Here's two. If you sound tense, like me, my go-to wasn't really ever angry, but it could sound tense. Like, if you caught me and I was in the middle of something, I'm doing this intentionally, you know, and I was like, uh, oh, going through a report and what? But it can be interpreted as that. Folks, people interpret your voice and they most often guess wrong. So you may be thinking, well, I was just looking at this and that's why I answered. And someone else may be interpreting it as you just took my head off. By the way, I also have a very loud speaking voice, if you haven't picked up on that already. And when I'm speaking in front of an audience, and I know that sounds so vain, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that it's fine. But when you're speaking to somebody in an office situation and my voice rises and I'm, I'm not paying attention, it sounds like I'm screaming at someone. It sounds like I'm telling them what to do. So let me give you a couple of quick examples as to how you can not overthink because you don't want to do that. You want to be at your best, most true, uh, your best, most true, authentic self. And then your voice resonates naturally. But if you realize, look, the easy one for me, when my voice is going out of control and it does happen, but well, that's easy. Just lower the volume, right? By the way, not to be all ADD distracted, damn right. Like, 
uh, perception absolutely is reality. Absolutely is. So it's worth noting. If you sound tense, harsh, it could be for any number of reasons. It could be something as simple as you're scrunched up on your computer when Zoom meetings were really popular. How much of this goofiness did you catch? Okay. You want to fix that? Easy. Expand your chest a little bit. Raise. It's not your chest muscles. It's literally here. Collarbone. Raise that a little bit. This allows the airflow to go through. This allows your voice to be more full, open, and natural. Oh, I'll sound like your fourth grade teacher when I tell you this too. <laughs> Put a smile on your face. Sit up straight. Put a smile on your face. If you're standing, that's fine. Just, just expand your chest a little bit so the airflow comes out. So you sound more friendly. Often, that's really all you want. That's it, it, that's your number one easy hack. Use your physiology. There is a book I just looked over, and it is brilliant. I've leaned into this a lot. The science of freeing your natural voice. The author is Kristen Linklater. Had you catch me having to turn it around to re make sure I pronounced her name right? Well, in my voice field, in the voice field that I have, the ability to realize how much everything interconnects between your mind, your body, your voice, everything. But here's the bonus tip. The bonus tip is it doesn't just interconnect for you. It interconnects with anybody who is hearing you. They feel the vibrations. It's not just the energy. They feel the vibrations. They feel the oxygen. You may not think that, but when you get these sort of confused mixed signals in the way that people are responding to the way that you're speaking, that's how, to me, that's the sign that something is not right. And that's the sign, obviously. And, and, and the solution can be as simple as change your physiology. I'm going to handle a question right now, which I really like. Do I do any jaw exercises? Mine are not as scientific as Kristen Linklater, but I've been taught a couple. One of personal favorite of mine is literally moving my jaw from side to side. I can actually hear muscles crack. What does it do? aside from sound weird, what it also does is, again, it, it, it allows for more airflow. Airflow will take harshness out of a voice. When I am moving my jaw and I'm expanding my lung capacity, which actually, because that's the end pass, right, is at your jaw. Chest, collarbone, that's giving you more here from your uh, vocal folds and your esophagus and your larynx. But where you're going, and I don't mean to sound all deep and scientific. By the way, I, I, I was terrible in bi biology in high school. So I have to rely on the smarts of other people. But what I will say is this, that giving yourself more air softens your tone. If you're a guy and you sound harsh or me loud, put some air into your tone. If you're loud, obviously reduce the volume. You want to sound calmer, reduce the speed, but be careful. When you speak too slowly, that's when you're starting to sound like that I've got those TPS reports that I need done. Would you please? <laughs> and that you don't want. So that sense of improving you goes right back to getting yourself fully prepared for a collaboration. Try it. I suggest it. It's not just, it's not just being mentally prepared. It's the physiology that's prepared to. And all of this stuff is 
simple. Everything that I've that I've learned, that I've experienced, that I've been grateful to be able to practice. You can make this overly complicated, but you just don't have to. You literally don't have to. That's one of the funnest parts here is these are tweaks and shifts. Again, I'm going to repeat, which you, we, everyone, we have the answers most of the time. We have access to incredible content, incredible solutions, reams of pages of physiology. But will you go to that? And the answer is, I don't know. And sometimes I get lazy and I don't, which is why I wanted to provide these quick, easy hacks. Take care of yourself. Reduce the clutter in your head with the breathing exercise. Allow your body to work with you when you are speaking to someone, right? And then number three for today, this is a personal favorite of mine. That expression, welcome, invite, and include, I'm leaving it up there for a moment because there's a really personal meaning to me about this. I'll give you the setup. So that expression, I used to work at Univision Communications. That's the big multicultural company that I've alluded to. And so I remember when I first went to Univision, now, I barely spoke Spanish language. I'm grateful to say they recruited me. That was really nice and all that stuff. And I'm not telling you that to impress you. It impressed me because I couldn't imagine. But they did. And I went over and I felt like a fish out of water. I remember that. I really felt lost. People would speak in Spanish and I was getting every other word. Maybe. Maybe. And so I just kind of like went into a shell. And it was and I felt lost. And, and there was colleague. Her name is Sarah Hassan, one of the coolest people I ever encountered. And if any, if Sarah Hassan is anywhere near this video, I'm, I remain such a fan. So Sarah is the rock star automotive guru, knows everything about everything. And not to mention, she's a killer presenter, killer. And I was starstruck, but I was lost. So Sarah comes up to me, she knows I'm new. And introduces herself and says to me, you know, well, what are you thinking? And I and I guess I had the courage to say, I'm feeling a little lost. And she's like, you know what? That's okay. Most people do. Sarah, she said she referred she referred to herself as the Nordic Latino, <laughs> bleach blonde hair and all that stuff, and very very Anglo. But she could speak beautifully. But she said I was the same. She said, but just give it a little while and you'll see the culture will take you over and then everything will make sense. Well, damn well did. And I'm so glad for that encounter. Sarah Hassan is the person, I think, that was the first one that said when we were looking to reach multicultural consumers or encouraging our advertisers. You need to reach multicultural consumers. The message, welcome, invite, and include. Make people feel welcomed, invited, and included. Don't talk at them. Don't talk on them. Bring them in. Make them feel like they're a part of the process. Now, why does that matter? It matters in that immediate concept. Oh, I'm going to go with that one step further. Welcome, invite, include, and engage. Oh my God, it's like you read. It's like you read this uh, this lesson today. I love it, Dave. So the answer is yeah, damn right. Because that's what we're doing here. What we're looking to do is in a collaborative business environment. Yes, you've got Gary Cole hovering over you. You've got condescending sounding people. You've got the boss telling you what to do. And none of that works anymore. None of it works anymore. People aren't going to be ordered around. They'll just quit or they'll go to HR. So why do it? What we're looking to do in a collaborative environment is absolutely have everyone feel that they're a part of a team. I'm going to paint a picture for you in regards to one of, I'm grateful to say I've had a lot of these experiences, but I could still picture one. 
I can still picture one where one of those was a work environment. One of my favorite Univision colleagues, one of my favorite people is Debbie Black. And she and I worked together at Univision and we were, and we collaborated a lot. Some of the biggest meetings that I ever participated in, I collaborated with Debbie. But it was Debbie that taught me the importance of collaboration. And it's not just, again, what you say. It's your voice, too. Because collaboration has to feel authentic. So when you're in environments, look, I... I, practice real estate. I work with real estate firms and communications. Heck, every so often I work with real estate firms in regards to real estate. (laughs) But between communications companies, real estate companies, do you know what's one of the things that's tough is there's so many layers now that often it's not boss demanding you do something. So it's not really what you say. And by the way, Jay Duran is one of my all-time favorite people. I'm a massive fan of Jay Duran. And Jay Duran created a whole company called Culture Matters. I really like the guy. I love what he preaches. I love every single bit of it in terms of the communicative process. And I'm only adding my own spin on one thing. None of this replaces content. None of it. It's simply a matter of making your content resonate more. Like, for instance, I'm going to go to another example, back to the real estate world, where I would be in training sessions at a real estate company, and we would be practicing scripts. So why does collaboration and the sound of your voice matter? I would be in one of these script practice sessions. And I can still recall, and the intentions were all good. Get better at scripts. What do you say? Then what do they say? Then you say what? Then you say, and that's great. But a couple of things happen. (laughs) One time bold. Um, But here's the thing. If you don't sound authentic, I don't care what you're saying. So would you say, would they say, would he say, would she say? It, it, it's mind numbing. So what do you do? Remember that everyone's input matters. Now, someone often has to take the lead in a collaborative session. That has happened to me. I've been the lead on these. You just have to remember the following. When you are speaking, two things have to happen. Number one, total respect to everyone speaking. Give as much information, but come from a place of curiosity. Your voice works with you. What would you like to add? What am I leaving out? What do you think we could add? Ask somebody that. What do you think What do you think we could do to make this better? Your voice softens. Your tone changes. And often people will want to answer the question because they feel welcomed, invited, included, and now they're engaged. Boom. Um, So I say that because here's what you're trying to do. You want everybody included. You're in a collaborative sales environment and you're all trying to brainstorm and put together or a, a creative ad agency environment. And you're trying to come up with this complete strategy. Why would you want everyone's input? Just drop in the chat. Why why would why would you want everyone's opinion? I'll start. You might come up with an idea better than yours. You might have a solution that you didn't think about. Some of my best ideas Oh, all right. I lied. Most of my best ideas aren't mine. So I always, always give credit. All of the, what I was talking about, pitch, pace, tone on the last slide, that was tip number two. I don't like your tone. Google Roger Love. 
I learned most of it from Roger Love. The fact of the matter is, I want to now know. I The old cliche, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I don't have the time for that. There's so much I don't know. And there's so much I'd like to know. But here's the thing. If you, if you are asking people for opinions and you sound terse, tense, have you ever been in a brainstorm session, a creative session, a, a group chat, whatever, where somebody gives an idea and they're like, nah, 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 that ain't it. Nah. I have. I have. And the fact of the matter is what happens when that occurs? Somebody's going to shut down. Somebody's going to get frustrated. Somebody's going to stop talking. And all this welcome, invite, and include, we want everyone's feedback. And you brush somebody off in the way that you say it. You don't have to agree with everything. You do not have to be a people pleaser. I've done it. I've done both of those things. But I've also participated in meetings where someone was just brushed off. Nah, no, 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 I didn't say that. No, what I mean, no, 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 no. You already spoke. No, no, no. You got to be so careful because you really do want, you really do want the fact. You want everybody to buy in. You want to save time. You want to come in. And obviously the, the sense of making it matter how you say it absolutely matters. I want the best idea on the table and I don't have to be the actual facilitator of it. Some of the best, best hello, some of the best presentations I have ever been a part of. Often when I was at Univision, I'm proud to say, and I, I know this sounds arrogant, I don't mean it to be, I often open the presentation and I close the presentation. I'm grateful to say that that was a lot of time and experience but the meat of that presentation was often in the middle. So I damn well for a group presentation or if it was more than just me speaking, the fact is I needed everyone. I needed everyone to feel welcomed, invited, include. Thank you, Dave, and engaged. So why I say all of this is we get these opportunities literally, sometimes all day, every day, but certainly every day, where you're speaking to someone. And my reminder is if you want something good to happen, it's not just the words, it's the sound of your voice. You want to improve your sales revenue. You want to improve your team's sales revenue. You need to know that they're finishing the job. I am asking nothing more than this. Anyone who is either leading a team or aspires to lead a team, pay attention to this for this reason. So often the salespeople are just sent out. Someone speaking in a real estate firm or in the uh, broadcast ad sales space, and then you're done your meeting, and then they all just leave, and then you hope for the best. So that's, and you're not there. You're not there to micromanage them or tell them you need to do this or you better say that. You're there to encourage that you're using their voice. You're there to make certain that all of the time and resources and just expenses of your training materials, of hiring salaries, commissions, what have you. You want your company to be profitable. You just have to remember that everyone has to sound their best. They don't need to sound like pros. Again, they don't need to sound like announcers. Hell, nobody wants them to. I get dialed back when I speak. People will say to me in voiceover land, John, you sound too announcery. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just talking. So <laughs> what I'm saying here is make certain you and your teams are sounding true and authentic. So those are my three tips for the day, folks. I'm going to handle a couple of questions right now. Uh, and I'm grateful that you did so. I love this question and I forgot it because I was going to cover it. So in step, the step three, and I'm going to pull that up. Uh, 
how do you approach someone to push their comfort zone and engaging them? So, Dave, if I don't answer the question correctly, just jump on and jump in again and, and I'll make sure. There's two parts, I believe, in terms of getting someone to engage. They have to feel like they're part of the process. They have to feel included. So how do you make somebody feel included when you are speaking with them? It's been brought up several times, and one of them is literally this. Oh, Dave said it. Uh, <laughs> listening is so important. What happens when you actively listen to someone? And then you ask a follow-up question that doesn't sound like an attorney in redirect or cross-exam, but in a coming from curiosity. You want somebody to engage more? You want to get someone to engage? Well, what you can do is make them want to. So you respect what they said. And if you want to draw more from them, as you say, push their comfort zone a little bit. Ask them, I don't know. Let me give you an example. Uh, so often asking open-ended questions where you're helping someone paint a picture. For example, so if we were able to solve X situation, if we were able to solve that situation, what would that be like for you? How would it feel? What would change for you if if I if we could do that? I don't know that I can. I don't know that I'm even capable. But say we do. Say we do. How would that work for you? What would it be like? Describe it for me. Describe it for me sounds like you care. When you sound like you care, people will respond. And when they do, you're going to actively reward the behavior. So the easiest way to do that is to, is to not do the exact opposite, which I talked about. No, no, that's not what I mean. No, I can't do that. And they're like, okay, never mind. Did you ever hear somebody say that? And then, and then the goof that did that literally follows up with, well, does anyone else have any other questions? And no one magically does, right? Because you shut it down. Best way, if, if you want to push them a little bit, Acknowledge what they said. Oh, all right. So if I heard your words that sound good, I don't mean just the actual words, but you can't help but say them in a way that is curious and authentic. For example, <laughs> so if I heard you correctly, you're thinking you would see more money in your future or, oh, extra bedrooms or, oh, I could have company visit more often. Did I hear that correctly? It sounds authentic. And again, remember, sometimes the words, I mean, the words always matter, but sometimes the words help you. And then sometimes you have to help yourself. I hope, I hope, I hope that answered your question. Um, now, by the way, aren't you, aren't you happy? Aren't you proud of me for not saying, no, 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 that's not about this. Um, <laughs> I, Mike, I love this. <laughs> Tasty bread on both sides, meat in the middle. And I'm trying to back off the bread a little bit. Bub, next time you see me in Chicago, I got I got, I got some serious work to do. So, um, but I love the way that you say that. I'm gonna bring up one more comment before we break, but I but I get this. And Dave, thanks for this. No environments are intimidating. I would go with the assumption that anyone is in their first day here, there first time they've met you, I would always assume they're probably a little less uncomfortable. You want to make somebody comfortable a little bit without turning it into a me thing? Because that shuts people down too. Oh, let me tell you about myself. Here's what I do. Blah, blah. Here's a little bit in regards to why I thought we should speak today. If you did any kind of homework, on the person. Act as if you know. Look, I host a podcast at least, oh my gosh, three different people I've either guested or host or, or, or have allowed them to guest on my own podcast. Here's one of the things that I've come to learn. 
do your homework because your questions sound better. And by sound better, I mean they're more authentic and somebody would actually want to answer them. First podcast that someone asked me to be on, I'll never forget. They're like, hey, would you want to be on my podcast? Sure. I'm going to say yeah to any of them right at the time. So I Google their podcast. And here was this, this person's intro. For I, I checked out three episodes. They did the same thing for all three. Literally, they bring the guest on. And here's the way they would start the conversation. Okay, so t- tell me your name and tell us a little bit about yourself. So I didn't do that podcast. <laughs> Because I thought if you care so little that I have to tell you my name, you don't have to go do a deep dive on me. But maybe you would know my name. Maybe you could put it up in the corner. This happens a lot that literally you're either hammering your own points home or just completely dismissing what the other person's bringing to the table. So that's a lot of words to say. How do you encourage somebody? I worked for a brokerage firm a lot of years ago and and this person was the new boss and I was really uncomfortable. I didn't like the field and I felt really uncomfortable in the office. And the person literally went to each individual privately and said, hey, I just want to get to know you a little bit better. I'll start. And they just said, hey, I, I grew up here and I've got X kids and I you know, I like golf and I do this and sometimes I don't like that, but it was very disarming for me. And I felt a little bit more comfortable, that sense of welcomed, invited, included, oh, and engaged. They don't all have to go in order, but you just want someone to know, I think that what they say is not going to be used against them, that you're not on the one chance and you're done mode. That point two, that they get the opportunity to be human. And third, give them a little bit of time and patience. Give them a little bit of time. People don't. I Listen, I did not, did not feel comfortable being myself until I was well into my 40s. It, it, it took me a long time. I was the ultimate people pleaser. I never wanted you to ask anything about me, ever. You know, I was deathly afraid. This is, as I said, up until my early, 40, early mid-40s, that I didn't want you to ask anything about me. I really thought you were just going to, like, take off or split or do something. So make them feel included. I hope that helps. And speaking of helps, folks, you've helped me more than you can possibly know. I am really, really grateful that you showed up for me today. Uh, Here's all I'm going to leave you with for today, for the moment. And I get to come back tomorrow. I get the gift of coming back tomorrow for day five. Here's what I'm putting in the comments. And I promise you it will be there as well too. Lastly, in the comments, I'm offering this. You stuck around for me. The least I can do is this. If you want to talk specifics in regards to the way that you communicate, that's my Calendly link. Book a half hour with me. We'll talk about whatever you want. White Sox, real estate, <laughs> voiceover. What we really could or should be talking about is specificity as it relates to the way that you communicate. If you don't feel comfortable about anything, let me know and maybe I can help. But I'm thrilled that you made the time for me today. I am over the moon grateful. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for showing up. Uh, I'm John Duffin, Duffin Media, Duffin Coaching. And I promise you that I will be back for day five, the conclusion of the five-day blitz tomorrow, 12 noon. Thanks so much again for checking us out. Have a great rest of the day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.